it is rib time again. But we're not just making ordinary ribs. We're going to try something a little different here with a marinade because we're going to be making drunken ribs on the pit barrel cooker. That's right, drunken ribs. So guess what one of the ingredients in this marinade is gonna be? Well, I'll let you see in just a minute. But first, we gotta get that marinade made. We're gonna start with one cup of brown sugar. To this, we're gonna add half a cup of soy sauce, half a cup of apple cider vinegar, a quarter cup of honey. We're also gonna be adding one Granny Smith apple that's been grated, and that includes the skin. Get a lot of this nice juice in there. And our final ingredient, one cup of whiskey. I'm using Jack Daniels, pick your own favorite. I'm gonna take our whisk and mix this together. And start slow because there's honey in there, which is thick, and if you go too fast, everything's just gonna fly out. Once that starts to incorporate, go ahead and speed up a bit. It smells a little alcoholy. Now the brown sugar is not totally going to dissolve. That's all right. Those little granules are going to be great when they get on the ribs in the marinade. I'm going to take a little taste. <laughs> it's a drunken marinade, <laughs> but it does have a really nice flavor to it. Nice sweetness. This is going to be terrific. So let's go ahead and get it on our ribs. All right. So what I have here is one half of a rack of St. Louis ribs. I'm going to be doing two full racks, but I've cut them each in half because they're gonna fit better in a little plastic bag in the refrigerator to marinate overnight. Now, I did not remove the membranes from these. I'm gonna be hanging these on the pit barrel cooker, and honestly, in the numbers of ribs that I've done now since I got that pit barrel cooker, I haven't found any difference in the taste, and no one's complained about any of the flavors on the ribs by leaving the membrane. And the one thing the membrane does do, it helps prevent those really tender ribs from potentially breaking on that hook and falling. So. I haven't had a rib rack fall yet. I know at some point I will, but for these, I'm just leaving the membrane on. If you want to take them off, go ahead. So I want to go ahead and get this rack in here. And we're just going to go ahead and pour maybe a third of this marinade in here. And you just want to go ahead and seal it up, squeeze the air out as much as you can. And what I'm going to do when I put this in the refrigerator is it's going to be turned over so the meat side is facing down. That way it will sit in the marinade and not the bone side. So we will be turning it over like this. And in the time between tonight and tomorrow as these marinate for about 12 hours, I'll probably move them around in the bags a couple times. So I'm going to go ahead and get the rest of these ribs in their bags in the marinade in the refrigerator. And I'll see you tomorrow morning out at the pit barrel cooker. All right, our ribs have been marinating for about 12 hours overnight. They're definitely drunken ribs. That smell is still coming off of them, that nice Jack Daniels smell. So I went ahead and let the marinade sort of drain off of these. I'm not patting them dry or anything because I want that moisture on the surface to act sort of as a natural binder. I usually don't add binders when I'm putting rub on uh, slabs of ribs or anything because I think there's usually enough moisture on the surface. If you want to put a binder, that's fine. And especially here, we don't need it. There's a lot of moisture on the surface still from that marinade. So now it's just time to get the rub on. Now use your favorite rub, whatever you like. Today I'm going to be using a rub that I've been working on. I don't have it perfected yet. It's still a work in progress, but I'm really liking it. And I'm not going for a really heavy coating, just, just a fair amount on each side and mostly on the meat side. Remember, we left the membrane on. So just a very little bit over here. Need a little bit on the edges. Maybe one more little dusting over here. Now it's time to get our hook in because we're gonna be hanging these in the pit barrel cooker. So I just wanna go over here. I'm gonna go down. Let's see, we got one bone, two bone. Right with that second bone there. Just like that. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get the rest of these rubbed up and then we're gonna get them out to the pit barrel cooker. All right, let's get the pit barrel cooker opened up, get our ribs on. I'm gonna get a piece of cherry down in here for some smoke today. All 
right, our racks are on. Let's get our lid on and get smoking. Now that the ribs are on, we're not gonna do anything for several hours. Probably check them in about two hours just to see if there's any dryness we need to spritz. I don't really think there will be with all that marinade, but we'll see. At about three hours, we're gonna start checking for that tenderness to see if we're close to done. And these racks that have been cut into half racks really shouldn't take any more than four hours. So I'll see you back here in a couple hours. All right, our drunken ribs have been on the pit barrel cooker for about two hours. Let's take a look. Those are looking very, very nice. I'm not seeing any drying here, so I don't believe we need to spritz. Again, these were marinated overnight, a lot of moisture put into these, so we're gonna get the lid back on. Let it go for another hour before we do our first real check for tenderness. All right, we are at the three hour mark. It's time to start checking these ribs for tenderness. These are looking really, really good. All right, let's take one rack and check it for tenderness. Got really nice color on here, some good bark developing. Pullback on the bones is not very prominent right now. So let's just see how we're doing in tenderness. Well, it's pretty good, but still needs more time. I'm gonna say we've probably got another hour to go on these ribs. So let's get this back on the PVC. We're gonna get our lid on. We'll check these in just about an hour. All right, we are four hours in. Let's check these ribs. I'm thinking they may be done. Oh, uh, look at those beauties. Look at that pullback from the bone. I think we may be done. We'll give a quick check here. Let's take this guy right here. We're just gonna use our probe here and <laughs> Yes, we are feeling really good there. Okay. Now, I don't like my ribs fall off the bone tender. If you want yours fall off the bone tender, I would take them another 30 to 45 minutes, but these are feeling pretty good to me. And we've got fantastic color on them. So these are gonna come off, we're gonna get them inside, and we're gonna have a taste. All right, here is one of our finished half racks of St. Louis cut drunken ribs. The color is terrific. It developed a nice little bark on there. But come on, let's cut in, let's see what we've got, and then let's taste it. So I'm gonna go right along this bone right here. And then right next to it. And let's take a look at one of these ribs. Oh yes, that looks good. That looks good, nice and juicy. Got a nice little smoke ring there too. One of the things I've been most impressed with the pit barrel cooker is that you know, in that shorter amount of time, you really do develop a smoke ring. It's really nice, but looks aren't everything. It's time to taste. So I'm just gonna dive in here. Ooh, that has a really, really good flavor. Just an awesome, different sort of flavor. And it's gotta be from the marinade. I usually don't marinate ribs. In fact, I can count on one hand probably the number of times I've actually marinated ribs. But letting those go overnight in that Jack Daniels marinade, man, let me tell you, it put some flavor in here. I also have to say, I'm really happy with that rub that I'm working on because great flavor on the outside. The development of the bark is pretty good. I do wanna play with the flavors a little bit, but I think I'm pretty close to having something that's good. And again, that's how I like it. Pull away from the bone when you bite it, not fall off the bone. Now, I didn't sauce these, spritz these, glaze these, or anything. I really wanted that marinade flavor to come through and not be masked by anything. Let that rub complement it. And I don't think these need sauce, but you know what? I am in favor of sauce if you want sauce. I'm not one of those people that says, never put sauce on it. If you want sauce, put it on there because I sauce my ribs all the time. Oh, that's good. So if you want to turn your ribs a little tipsy, try a whiskey marinade or a marinade with some other sort of alcohol you like. Give it that time overnight, cook it up on the pit barrel cooker if you have one, or your grill if you don't have a PVC. I gotta tell you, these are some darn good ribs. Oh man.